share this with other devotees. Not everybody is able to get into Zoom. So uh, I'll just put it on Facebook. So that last section here. The duty of the grown son to take charge of the mother and serve her. What to do if the mother doesn't have a son? If she doesn't have a son, what to do? Then one thing she can do is she can go back to the father. Just like when, when Krishna killed Kamsa, then Kamsa's wives, they had become widows. And so they went back to their father. They went, actually Kamsa's wives were the daughters of Jarasandha. <laughs> so they went back to Jarasandha. If we have no son, then if there's, the father is not there, then take shelter of the spiritual master. You go to the ashram and stay in the ashram of the spiritual teacher. That's like renounce life. So in the absence of the father, the wife also has to renounce. Wife, all, women also have to prepare for the next life, not only the men. Men get very attached. The women's nature is to be attached. We have to change that attachment to Krishna, not to just the family and the comforts of the material body. So Lord Kapila stayed on the strand of Bindu Sarova to please his mother Devahuti. Generally we think of Lord Kapila, his ashram is at Ganga Sagar. You know Ganga Sagar, the, where the Ganges flows into the sea. There's a Kapila Muni's ashram. It said Kapila Muni resides there eternally. To this day he's still there at Ganga Sagar. And every year there's a big mela there at Ganga Sagar in the month of January. Many devotees go there. Many pilgrims all come there. It's a very big mela. Maybe sometime you'll be fortunate and we can all go there to Ganga Sagar and we can see Kapila Muni's ashram. So here, this is at Bindu Sarova. This is where Devahuti was residing. So Lord Kapila has come there to instruct his mother. Here you can see Shonaka and Sutta Goswami and all the great sages in the Naimisharanya forest. They're also hearing about Lord Kapila. Shonaka Rishi inquired from Sutta Goswami about Kapila Muni's activities after this event. Sutta replies, what Maitreya told Vidura. Right? <laughs> this is a parampara. Maitreya told Vidura, and the same thing is told by Sutta to Sonaka. We're hearing the same message, the same information being passed on. So, what was the purpose of Lord Kapila's advent? His appearance. Generally we know Lord Kapila as the, the, the founder of the Sankhya philosophy. Sankhya philosophy. There are six main darshans, six different philosophical systems. There is the Patanjali Yoga, there is Gautama logic, there's Kapila, Sankhya, there is Vyasadev's Vedanta, there's Jaimini, Karma Mimamsa, and there's the impersonalism from Astavakra. These are what are called the 
Sat Darshan, so the, the six philosophical systems which are prominent. And of, of the six, the most famous, the most respected above all of them is Vyasadeva's Vedanta. But Lord Kapila, what was his purpose in adventing? We've described here to disseminate transcendental knowledge for the benefit of the whole human race. Just as Lord Krishna describes in Bhagavad Gita, Paritranaya sadhunam vinaschaya chaduskritam dharma samstarpanartaya sambhavami yuge yuge. So in every age he will come to give pleasure to the devotees, annihilate the demon, and re-establish religious principles. So similarly, Lord Kapila, his, his real mission is giving knowledge, transcendental knowledge, to benefit all mankind. We want to understand the glories of Lord Kapila. No one knows more than the Lord himself. Right? We want to hear, the best person to hear from is the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself. Just as Lord Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita, so in the same way Lord Kapila is coming to distribute the same knowledge, the Sankhya. It's a, not really any different from what Lord Krishna teaches, the, the purpose is the same to detach us from the material existence and to bring us to the point of devotional service. No one is more worshipable or more mature a yogi than the Lord. We have to worship the Supreme Lord. He is Bhagavan, he's the possessor of all opulences, and as devotees, then we also have to worship him. It's human nature to offer worship, but often our worship is misdirected. We worship ordinary people, movie stars, pop singers, entertainers, politicians, sportsmen. The person who we should be worshipping is the Supreme Lord and he is the greatest yogi. He is the master of all yoga. Just like Lord Krishna is described in the final verse of Bhagavad Gita. Hmm? Uh, it's mentioned there that wherever there is Lord Krishna, the master of all yoga, and Arjuna, the expert bowman, then there will be victory, knowledge, morality, and extraordinary power. Yatra tatra yogeshwaro parto yatra parto dhanadara. Tatra shri vijayo buddhya dhruva matir matir mana. Right? So Lord Krishna is yogeshwara, he's the master of all yoga. Other people that do yoga to get yoga powers, Lord, the Lord has all of these powers. He is the master of the Vedas. He gives the Vedic knowledge to Brahma. Tenhe Brahma He imparts the knowledge into the heart of Brahma. To hear about him always is the actual pleasure of the senses. We're all looking for pleasure. We, we want to find that pleasure in transcendence, not in mundane sense gratification. So very important for us to understand the importance of hearing. The first step of devotional service. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna spoke the yoga ladder in the first six chapters. And then in the seventh chapter, he begins by telling Arjuna, Now hear from me, Arjuna, how by practicing yoga you can know me in full, free from doubt. So hearing, 
what, why is it so important for us? That we can, through hearing we are able to associate with Krishna. We should develop some pleasure, some taste for, hear, for associating with Krishna. And we get Krishna's association through hearing. Not only hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, hearing the holy name. And this, is, this should give pleasure to the senses, depending on how we have purified ourselves. We should be developing some taste for hearing. The more we hear and chant the glories of the Lord, the more we become happy. We have to practice. Why don't we have taste for hearing and chanting? That is our disease, that is our jaundice of material life. Because we're so entangled with material life, we have no taste for hearing and chanting. How to get the taste? You have to do more service, do more hearing and chanting and gradually the taste will awaken. The taste is there. So Srimad Bhagavatam chapter 25 then goes on, Devahuti is in some difficulty. You know women often get these problems, we often find women in anxiety, some problem. So Devahuti is approaching her son, described here. Once as Kapilamuni was sitting leisurely, Devahuti approached her son and expressed her weariness with material existence. This is a very good qualification. She's we, her, her weariness, her tiredness with materialistic life. Oh, that's a very nice situation. One, we should all be tired. I hope you all can experience this, this weariness of material existence. At such a point, when we have that condition, then it's easy for us to approach and to hear and get spiritual knowledge. So Devahuti has come to her son to inquire to learn from him. Devahuti says to Kapilamuni, I am very sick of the disturbance caused by my material senses. For because of this sense disturbance, my Lord, I have fallen into the abscess of ignorance. So you can understand from these words, Devahuti is a very enlightened lady. She's a very uh, pure soul, pure hearted. She had accepted Kardama Muni as her husband, gave up all the opulence of her family life to come and live in the forest and perform austerities with Kardama Muni. After performing great austerities for a considerable time, only then did Kardama Muni use his yoga powers to create some comfortable situation for them and they went traveling and then they had their children. But after the husband is gone, then Devahuti naturally, she feels some difficulty. When the husband was there, then it was not so difficult for her. She had somebody, some shelter there. But now that the husband's gone away, she has her son. And she, she knows also that her son is not just an ordinary child, but he's a very great personality who has come as her child. Therefore she could approach him and she could express her condition to him. She said she, she's, she's sick of the disturbance. It's a disturbance. The material senses, they're always demanding attention. 
Uh, our mind and sense is always disturbed where we want so many different objects, we want to please the body in so many different ways. So Devahuti understands this is all ignorance and she's come to approach Lord Kapila to guide her, to help her. She continues, oh no, this is, this is common. We are evolving through different statuses of material bodily existence. Sometimes human body, animal body, the engagement of our material senses are also changing. Yeah. All these different creatures, as you see here in these pictures, they all have senses and they're all serving their senses. They're all engaged in the acts of the senses, eating and sleeping and mating and defending. So this is the business of material life, the acts of the senses. We, we have to understand there is something more to life than these activities. It's not just only these things. If we are only eating, sleeping, mating and defending, that is animal life. Human life is meant for something more, right? And here you can see what is required. Devahuti says to her son, your lordship is my only means of getting out of this darkest region of ignorance because you are my transcendental I which by your mercy only I have attained after many, many births." So in this way Devahuti is uh, appreciating her good fortune that she has a son. And she had already been told by Lord Brahma that her son is an incarnation of the Lord, even before she delivered the child. Lord Brahma had told her that you will have a son who is an incarnation of God. So she's able to approach him with these kind of words. Usually the mother will not come to the son and address the son as your lordship, <laughs> right? But she knows the importance of this appearance of Lord Kapila. That she said, you are my transcendental eye, right? Our material eyes can only see the objects of the senses. We need transcendental vision. By the mercy, by, with the help of transcendental vision, then we can solve all the problems of life. The word Paragam is very significant. It refers to one who can take the disciple to the other side. This side is conditioned life. The other side is the life of freedom. The spiritual master takes the disciple to the other side by opening his eyes with knowledge. Right? We, we have that prayer we offer regularly, Om Magyana Timarandasya, right? Our eyes are blinded with the darkness of ignorance, but the spiritual master forced opened our eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. So like this, the same way Devahuti is expressing her feelings to Lord Kapila that she wants to take advantage of her son she wants her son to guide her, to help her, to understand how to get free of all of this anxiety in the mind. She addresses Lord Kapila, You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the origin, Supreme Lord of all living entities. You have arisen to disseminate the rays of the sun 
in order to dissipate the darkness of ignorance of the universe. So this is Devahuti glorifying Lord Kapila, offering her prayers, respecting him, understanding this, the purpose of appearance. By the grace of the Lord, one is allowed to enjoy this material world. Yeah, certainly some people enjoy the material world, some people enjoy it more than others. We should understand the happiness we get in material life, it's also the grace of the Lord. He gives us a nice home, nice family, income, no health problems. This, this is the, the grace of the Lord. Sometimes people don't appreciate how fortunate they are. But when one is dis when one is disgusted with material enjoyment and is frustrated, <laughs> that's a different situation. When everything's going well, we're very happy. But when the world changes, then we, we really wonder what's going on, what's the purpose of life? Just like you can see this poor pair of people here in Mayapur now, uh, they just brought, a few days ago, they brought 75 people here to do their uh, quarantine for 14 days. They put them into some government building, which is uh, just on the other side of the road from our temple in Mayapur. <laughs> so we have to be very careful. They've got all these people, they're, they're not positive quarantine. Uh, they're not, it's not positive that they've got the COVID virus, but they're here on quarantine and they have to spend 14 days. So we have to be very careful. <laughs> material, it's very hard to enjoy material life. And how long you can enjoy it? Very short. So when one sincerely surrenders unto the lotus feet of the Lord, then the Lord is so kind that he frees one from entanglement. This is this beautiful illustration you can see on the top of the screen. We're in this ocean of material existence and we're suffering so many different tests, trials and tribulations and we have to surrender to Krishna and then he can help us, he can free us, just like in the illustration, the Lord is coming on the back of Garuda to pick up the devotee out of the ocean of material existence. So misery and suffering is at the heart of material experience. It is the inherent nature of this world, cannot be avoided. We all, we all like to avoid the suffering, we de nobody likes misery and suffering, but you cannot avoid it. I was talking to one man, he was saying, I'm not looking for any trouble. I say, I told him, you don't have to look for it, it comes anyway. It's the nature of the material world. Prabhupada described material life, he said, it's like a, a salt mine. You know, if, you go in the, if you're in the salt mine and you, you may have some nice cheesecake or ice cream and peaches, but when, if you're in the salt mine, everything will taste of salt. So material life is like that. It's only one taste, really, material work. So much suffering there. Can't avoid it. Ignorant of his true identity, identifying with the body, he searches out material objects for his pleasure, thinking, I am the enjoyer, the world is meant for me to exploit. Bhagavad Gita describes two kinds of nature. There is the divine or the devotee and there is the demonic, those who are not devotees, the non-devotees, the atheistic. 
and the atheistic non-devotees, they are thinking like this, I am the enjoyer. Mm. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, uh, Ishwaraham ahambogi siddoham balavam shuki. Ishwaraham, I am the controller. Ishwaraham ahambogi, I am the enjoyer. Siddoham, I am perfect. Balavan, I am strong. Suki, I am happy. And so, like the ma demoniac, materialistic people, in their ignorance, they're thinking like that. They're, they're thinking, I am the enjoyer. Everything is for my pleasure. This is the illusion of material life. Apparently successful enjoyment is temporary. The frustrated eternal soul continues to long for true happiness. Yeah, we get some success in the material life, but it's, it's not eternal. We want to get eternal happiness. And that eternal happiness can only come on the spiritual platform. We have to awaken the soul. Then we can experience real pleasure. Devahuti understood this and therefore wished to cut her material existence at the root. She wanted to stop trying to exploit matter for her own pleasure. Devahuti has this, the proper understanding that the material existence has just brought her suffering. And she wants to stop all this, all these desires for material happiness and for the senses. Because she had a lot of material enjoyment. Material enjoyment, we can't even begin to compare. You know, we have some pleasure. We may go to Thailand, we may go to uh, Europe or Australia for some enjoyment. But Devahuti and Kadama Muni, they went to Mount Meru where the demigods enjoy. Their enjoyment was far superior. They had a huge aerial mansion to travel everywhere. We cannot even begin to understand their enjoyment. But it's all temporary, this kind of enjoyment. We have to learn to get free from this attachment, this desire to enjoy the material energy. Therefore, Devahuti says to Lord Kapila, I have taken shelter of your lotus feet because you are the only person of whom to take shelter. You are the axe which can cut the tree of material existence. This example of the axe Maybe you remember when we study Bhagavad Gita, you can see in this illustration the banyan tree. In the uh, 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna compares the material world to the, ba to the banyan tree. Banyan tree means the root up and the branches down. Are you having fun? Who are you having fun with? Uh, Deva Prabhu and Deva Dwarkadesh Prabhu, can you please mute yourselves? I already mute Prabhu. No, 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 I can still hear you Prabhu. <laughs> yeah, you can see that the, the reflection. So material, the mater, this material world is a reflection of the spiritual world. But the banyan tree is like our situation in the material world. 
Those in the upper branches of the tree, they are the higher forms of life, like the demigods. And the lower living entities are in the lower branches of the tree. How to get out of the entanglement being in this tree? You cannot uproot the tree because so many branches and roots everywhere. You need an axe to cut the tree. So what is that axe? That axe is detachment. We have to cultivate detachment from this material. The detachment is compared to the axe, which can cut our way out of that tree. So Devahuti says, I therefore offer my obeisances unto you who are the greatest of all transcendentalists. And I inquire from you as to the relationship between men and women, between spirit and matter. Just like spirit and matter are always together, material body without spirit, the, the body is dead. So matter and spirit are always together. In the same way, this relationship between men and women is very prominent in life. And Prabhupada would say, in the material world, every man needs a woman, and women need a man. So the same way, spirit and matter are always connected to each other. Difficult to read this, I got this. Kapila thanks his mother and smilingly introduces Devahuti to the ancient path. Okay, thank you. So, Lord Kapila is very pleased to have his mother approach him like that, to bring these inquiries to him. So he explains, unless one is interested in understanding his spiritual life or his constitutional position, and unless he also feels inconvenience in material existence, his human form of life is spoiled. So important that like this Lakapila is describing qualification for taking up Krishna consciousness. We have to have some interest in spiritual life. We, we have to feel tired or feel this inconvenience about the material existence. This is very important for us if we want to make proper use of the human life. But if we are thinking, oh, life is not so bad, oh, I'm not, I'm having a good time, oh, it's not so bad, oh, the virus will be over soon, we'll get back to enjoying again, you know. No, the same problems are going to be there, the same problem. Disease is not going to stop. The fear of death is always there. You cannot avoid this. We have to think about these things. We have to feel that how inconvenient, how much trouble there is in this material existence. Where is the real life? We want to get the real life. We want to find the real place. So the yoga system which relates to the Lord and the individual soul, which is meant for the ultimate benefit of the living entity and which causes detachment from all happiness and distress in the material world is the highest yoga system. Lord Kapila is describing this, is, this yoga system, this knowledge of Sankhya relates to the Lord. Yoga means to connect to the Lord and connect the soul in the, to the Lord. And this is the actual situation. The living entity is a part of where we have separated ourselves from the Lord, we have to connect ourselves to the Lord. 
detachment from the situations of the material world, the happiness and distress. We tend to be very much affected by these things, different conditions. When we are happy, we feel so joyful, and when things go bad, then we feel so distressed. So we have to learn to understand how temporary all of these things are, and not to be overly affected by them. So the yoga system, controlling the mind and the senses. Be tolerant. Don't be disturbed by happiness and distress. Bhagavad Gita describes Tam Bharata. Tolerate, right? The, ha the heat and the cold, and the happiness and distress. These things are all in the mind. It's in the mind we're feeling happiness. In the mind we're feeling the distress. We have to control the mind, not to be disturbed by these things. In the material world, one cannot have unadulterated happiness. Any kind of happiness one has contaminated by distress. If we want to drink milk, then we have to bother to maintain a cow, keep her fit to supply milk. <laughs> Could you imagine it, keeping cows in Singapore or Hong Kong? to keep a cow. So Prabhupada's making the point anyway that so much trouble is there. You want the pleasure of drinking milk, you have to take the responsibility to keep the cow. Of course, we have made it, we're, we're very expert in avoiding the difficulties of material life. We let other people keep the cows for us. We import the milk from Australia in cartons and like that, you know, we have it all imported from some faraway place. In that way we forget all the troubles which are actually there. We're, we try to put on a, a nice presentation of happiness. No, I just go to a supermarket and purchase everything. We don't think about how much trouble there is in producing all of these things. People don't even understand, many, some people today, they don't even know milk comes from the cow. They think milk is something like Coca-Cola or, or uh, some orange drink or something, you know, they think it's just something you, you make. They, people mix some powder, chemicals together and you get it. They don't know milk comes from the cow and cows are our mother and they have to be taken care of. Right? Here you can see. Gomata ki jai. We need nice cows, very important. So Kapila Muni assures his mother that he will explain the yoga system which is serviceable and practical in every way and just as he explained formerly to the great sages. So this is, this is Krishna consciousness, you see. It has to be serviceable, has to be something we can easily perform, practical in every way. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be too difficult, it shouldn't be too much, uh, too hard for us. You can see how Prabhupada's system in pre presenting Krishna consciousness, very serviceable, very practical. People in every situation, they can practice Krishna consciousness. So Lord Kapila presents also the Sankhya philosophy in a similar way. The stage in which the consciousness of the living entity is attracted by the three modes is called conditioned life. 
we trying to enjoy the material world. This is the problem. Our conditioning, we're, we're conditioned to think, I'm the body, I can enjoy, and it's all under the control of three modes of nature. We have to overcome that. When that same consciousness is attached to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then one is situated in the consciousness of liberation. So we want liberation, we have to change the attachment, change the consciousness. We have to become attached to Krishna. We do it, chanting Hare Krishna, Kirtan, worshipping Krishna, read the books about Krishna, like that, very simple. To untie the rope of illusion, Kapila Deva explains, one must eradicate the lust and greed which are the products of false identification with the body. So the lust and the greed, this is a mode of passion and ignorance which is keeping us in materialistic life. We have to get rid of that. We do it very easily by chanting Hare Krishna, simply by taking shelter of Krishna. When one drops the illusion, Kapila is instructing his mother, when we drop the illusion of I and mine, he becomes pure, no longer experiences material happiness and distress. The happiness and distress is all in the mind because we're thinking, I am the body, this is mine, this belongs to me for my pleasure. So very this conditioning of material life. Give them up, take them away, right? Then become actually joyful. We can experience real happiness. Mind and the senses in Krishna's service. This is the process, Krishna consciousness. Use the our senses in the service of Krishna. If we're not using the senses and the mind in Krishna's service, we'll use them in the service of Maya. We have senses, they have to, we cannot stop the senses, we have to use them. So we have to know the positive application of the mind and the senses. Bring the mind to Krishna, use the senses for the pleasure of Krishna not for just materialistic sense gratification. At that time, the soul can see himself to be transcendental to material existence. Always self-effulgent, never fragmented, although very minute in size. Yeah, the soul is very small, one hundredth of one hundredth of a tip of a hair very tiny, infinitesimal, and the soul is not material, it is transcendental, it is spiritual energy, always self-effulgent. That one soul in the body spreads consciousness throughout the body. So the, it's the nature of the soul in the body that it is not fragmented, it's not that the, our soul has become broken away from the Supreme Soul and we have to go back and merge into the Supreme Soul. No, we have to understand we're all eternally part and parcel. One in quality, different in quantity. We are very small, but the Lord is very great. In that position of self-realization, by practice of knowledge and renunciation in devotional service, one sees everything in the right perspective. He becomes indifferent to material existence and the material influences act less powerfully upon him. So this is the effect when we're 
practicing Krishna consciousness, we feel this detachment from the mind and the senses. We cultivate some knowledge and renunciation, we don't have to try for renunciation. Naturally it comes about just simply by doing devotional service. We become detached from the material. The consciousness is changed. We start to see everything in relation to Krishna. Instead of thinking it's mine, we think of Krishna. It's all for Krishna's service. So this full freedom from illusion, as Kapila Muni explained, brought about only when we practice devotional service. This is the glory of devotional service. We want to get out of maya, we want to get free of delusion, simply serve Krishna. Devotional service is so powerful that when service attitude, everything is revealed. Prabhupada writes in the Nectar of Instruction that everything depends on the attitude of the disciple. So here again they're talking about service attitude. We should have that service attitude. That is, then we can understand everything. Okay, so now we finished. This is the conclusion of this first section on Kapila San Sankhya Yoga. Lord Kapila is teaching us to be detached from the body by devotional service. Um, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, we have um, one question. Um, it was posted earlier on in the class um, and during the class itself, Guru Maharaj, you had already answered many aspects of this uh, query. But I will still um, post this question, Maharaj. I'll still read it out. So Sudhir Prabhu, one of our own participants, he has written, Maharaj Ji, assuming if the world has a deep pleasure with family and environment and without suffering pain, disease throughout the life, what would men think of the Lord in his life? How different is true pleasure in being with the Lord compared to mere pleasure that we enjoy in this world? <laughs> yeah. Well, we have to understand the nature of pleasure that we enjoy in this world how it is very temporary and how much effort you have to make to achieve that pleasure. Is it so easy to get that pleasure in this material world? Generally there's a lot of effort required to get pleasure, to get enjoyment in this material world. A lot of effort. It doesn't come so easily. And how long is it going to last? And then, where are you going to go at the end of this life? Where are you going to go? Jiva Goswami tells about uh, the benedictions given to the different people. The king's son, he was blessed, don't die. And because the king's son is enjoying. So, okay, somebody's enjoying material life very nicely, but how long? What will happen in the next life? If you don't do anything good, you don't do any pious activities, you never take time to go to temple, you never worship the Lord, you never hear and chant, then at the time of death, what are you, where are you going to go? What are you going to tell Yamaraj? Are you going to enjoy in the court of Yamaraj? So, like uh, Jiva Goswami said about the king's son, Rajaputra Charanjiva, don't die. Because when you do die, then you, you, you really have problems. Yeah, there's the illusion of happiness in the material world. But you have to, we have to understand, it's not eternal. It's, it's not the pleasure of the soul, it's sim simply skin pleasure. Uh, 
how many people are enjoying that kind of pleasure? Of course, many, many people want that kind of pleasure, how many get it? You may get it, you may be fortunate in this life, you've got some pleasure. What about the future? You have to think, just like, think about old age. People make arrangements to retire. They will save up some money so that they have some income behind them when they retire. We have to think also, at the end of life, next life, where are we going to go? If you say at the time of death everything is finished, okay, that, that's your atheistic conclusion. But we don't accept like that. We don't think that the time of death everything is finished. So that you, you have to, as Devahuti had said, you have to be inquisitive. You have to want to understand, you have to feel also the difficulties of material life. If you're not feeling the difficulties of material life, then okay, you've got some good karma, you're enjoying your good karma from the past, you have a nice situation in this life, but it's not eternal. There's a future life. And you should make some arrangements, do some good work, prepare yourself for the next life. This is a Vedic system. Mm. Okay. Guru Maharaj, just one more question. But before that, I, I, I recall um, in one of your classes, uh, you had mentioned that, you know, uh, there was this person who was asking a similar question and uh, I think was it a reply from you or from Prabhupada that, you know, just wait, just wait. Yeah. Or it might be a luxurious life today, but disease, uh, etc. may set in as time goes by. Yeah. So it's not going to be uh, luxurious. Yeah, the time of death, then it's a difficult situation. So Guru Maharaj, I've got uh, two more questions. Um, the one is from Deva Prabhu. We know that godly life is the right way in life, but there is a gap between knowing and doing. How do we develop the willpower to tip into godly life? Well, association is very important. You have to be inspired by association. You have to, you have to also be as we said, you, there, you, you have to feel the, the disappointments, the frustration of the material existence. We really want to enter into spiritual life. There has to be some, uh, of the, just like Devahuti, she had felt, you know, the difficulty. She was weary, she was tired of trying to satisfy the mind and senses. So we have to have that kind of mood. There ha we have to feel some frustration and uh, just the disappointment, the attempts of trying to enjoy the material world. We, we have to be looking for something. If we're actually looking for something better, for some solution to the problems of the material existence, then Krishna Consciousness is the answer. If you have an inquisitive nature, if you're always trying to understand why you like this, then you have to read Prabhupada's books and you get all the answers. It's all there. Hmm. Um, I will Unmute the, I will request the devotees Yogita Mataji to unmute and ask your question. And then following that, uh, Sudarshan Prabhu, you can ask your question. Yogita Mataji, kindly unmute yourself. Yes, thank you, Prabhu. Gurudev, normally people tell us, uh, we, devotees tell us we shouldn't get attached, which is completely understandable. 
but then we get attached to serving the Lord in a particular way. For example, a deity service or a serving, uh, cooking food or whatever for the Lordship. And then we're told that sometimes it's okay, even if you skip, not a problem. I, I just remember your one instruction, Gurudev. Deity service, there should be no compromise. So how do I, uh, what can I do in such situations when I'm requested by the devotees themselves for you? You're requested not to do it or to do it. Not to do it. You're requested not to cook. Uh, to, I can be, uh, go to temple for some service or for the class and I can miss my DT service. That's okay. You can miss, miss your DT service. Yeah. Oh, they, they don't want you to do the DT service. Yeah, they said it's okay if you miss, but you're coming for the class, that's good enough. So what do I... I feel bad because somehow with it, there's a tinge of connection that one feels, you know? So even to miss the service, you feel like you're missing some connection, you feel that is lost with the Lord. So there's attachment to the service itself. Yeah, there should be attachment to the service. It's very good. You should have attach attachment to the service. And you should want to keep your uh, service up. If you've been allocated some service, you want to make a point of being able to do it. You don't want to be thinking, oh, can you do it for me? I can't come like that. If, if Krishna is so kind to arrange for you to get the opportunity to serve the deity, you want to keep that service up. Of course, family life, we know you're not living in the temple, so there may be some emergency situations, some difficulties come up which make it difficult for you. What can be done? That's, you know, that's the, your situation, that you're, you're not living in the temple, so sometimes you have some difficulty. Maybe your husband has a health problem, you have to take care of him or something, some other things are going on and you may not be able to do your service. But you should regret it, you should feel very sorry about it. So having an opportunity to do service for the deities is it's very special, you're very, very fortunate and you definitely want to do that service is with great care and attention and try to make all arrangements and it should really be a very, very difficult situation which prevents you from doing that service. But if the devotees know that you're coming, sometimes you come, sometimes you don't, then, they, then, of course, they won't feel so much encouraged to depend on you. They will, they will know that, oh, sometimes she comes, sometimes she doesn't. You know, half the time she doesn't come. So they'll think, oh, better we do it ourselves, because they'll always have to look. Is she coming or is she not coming? Is she coming? Is she coming? She, you know, then it makes it difficult for them. So they prefer, you know, if you're not going to come, then better they just do it themselves. They know you're not coming. But if, if half time you come, half time you don't, then it's not very good. Makes it, mm. be, makes it very difficult for them. Mm. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, Guru Maharaj, most of us are going to be, you know, going back into our virtual office meeting in the next 15 minutes. So, um, for those of you who can't continue to be on the call, you will, you know, log off any time. Um, thank you very much for being on the call today. And uh, Krishna willing, we will have Guru Maharaj coming back next week uh, on another virtual call for... Um, 
Guru Maharaj, we have one last question from Sudarshan Prabhu. Sudarshan Prabhu, can you kindly unmute yourself? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, Dhanwad Pranams. Uh, this is a question from us. Uh, in performing devotional service, right, the weeds um, uh, grow along while we water the bhakti lata. So, and the chief of these uh, weeds would be like Laba, Puja, and Pratishta. So, how do we overcome this, Guru Maharaj? <laughs> uh, well, how do we overcome any of these anartas which come in devotional service? We have to just simply be very attentive in our hearing and chanting. And we have to intensely desire Krishna's mercy to make us humble and to protect us from becoming proud and desiring adoration and distinction. Lord Chaitanya teaches us Srinada Pisa Niche Na Tarora Pisa Ish Amanina Manadena Kirtani Yasad. So Amanina Manadena offering all respect to others and not being anxious for respect for ourselves. That's very powerful. If we can develop that kind of humility to be very humble and respectful to others, to, you know, offering respect and, and taking shelter of the holy name as much as we can, chanting. So this is really the, the medicine for the material life, for the, the disease of our materialistic life, which causes the anartas to grow. Just if we take full shelter of the holy name, chant with great care and attention, trying to avoid offences and cultivating that kind of humility. Of course, difficult to be humble in, sometimes in your situation. You know, you're a respected teacher, you're a lecturer, and you have your PhD, and you have children also who you're telling to do things like that, you know. So in many ways, you know, you're a controller, you have position, you have authority. But at the same, we have to remember also that we're tiny servants of Krishna. Krishna has given us these different uh, positions in the material life. They're all designations. You're a mother or a father. You're a, you know, what, faculty member and like that in the, in the college and so on. Different, uh, this is all upadis. So devotional services, sarvupadi vinir muktam. When we give up all of these designations and we put ourselves into the pure consciousness, Jivarsvarupahaya Nitya Krishna Das. Remember, I'm a soul, I'm a servant of Krishna. So externally, you have to portray, you know, you, you're, you're a mother and you're a faculty and so on, but internally, you have to guide. You have to guard yourself. You have to remember, I am a tiny servant of Krishna. You have to keep that kind of consciousness within. Externally, yeah, you play the role and accept respect from others and so on. But internally, remember, I am simply the tiny servant of the servant, many times a servant of Krishna. So, yes, it's, a, it's difficult. But gradually, Krishna makes us humble. Old age comes. The children grow up. They go away. They'll leave you. You get old. You retire from the job and so on. You stay at home. You know, old, your beauty, you lose the beauty. The hair goes all gray or falls out, or something, you know, and the bodily beauty is lost, old age comes, makes us humble. But better, before old age comes, you all try to cultivate that humility. 
So chanting is very important and studying Prabhupada's books, hearing the philosophy also helps. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj, uh, for a wonderful class. Okay, thank Hare you, Krishna, Prabhu. Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Oh, Hare Krishna, Dwarkadish. You had a birthday Hare yesterday. Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Dwarkadish's birthday yesterday, right? Yesterday. <laughs> I'm alone. I'm alone in Penang. Only my children are celebrating in KL. <laughs> oh. No birthday cake, yeah? Huh? Anyway, do, 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 yeah, did a lot of chanting and get the blessing from Lord Krishna. <laughs> Jai. <laughs> yeah. Very good. How, how was the uh, typhoon in uh, Mayapur, Guru Maharaj? Everything safe? Uh, well, I haven't been outside the wind. Big winds. There's still some wind here. Still some wind. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Take care, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Haribo. 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 Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Haribo. So the the, mor huh? the morning participants, uh, you know, you can log off. Um, I I'll just leave the line open. Ramananda, Sushmita, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. So you're on lockdown. You're staying at home or what? Hare Krishna. Yeah. Yes, Maharaj, we are. I'm staying at home, um, uh, working from home also, Maharaj. Working from home, oh, okay. Yes, yes. I think I'll stay at home for a while because of uh, age and all that. Uh, they want those who are older to uh, work from home uh, and let the younger ones and slowly go back to office. That's the intention here. Okay. So we'll do that. A nice break you for you. Much, a nice break, nice break for you. Huh? <laughs> what about Sashi Kumar? Sashi is online also. In, uh, Sashi, you want to say something? He's, uh, he's in Perth now. He's also locked down there. Oh, is it locked down in Perth? He came yeah. back. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. And Hare Krishna Prabhu. You're in Perth, huh? Yeah, I'm in Perth, Maharaj. Oh. What happened to, was it Tasmania? Uh, in the temple? Are you staying in the temple? Jashi? No, no connection. What's with Rekha? Huh? Uh, uh, Australia is opening up now. Singapore will be a while before it can open up. They have given June 2nd and uh, gradually in phases uh, they will open up. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Very Guru bad. Rupa uh, Raghunath Prabhu and Gaurangi uh, Mataji are also on the line. Oh, okay. Yeah, I could talk to them. Uh, yeah. Rajahari Prabhu. Oh. Hare Krishna Maharaji. Hey, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Today is my birthday, Maharaj. Really? Wow. No, oh, very nice. Yeah. So you have a lockdown, you're staying at home with the children? Yes, yes, the children and my brother is also, we all are just um, working from home. Oh, oh my goodness, nice. <laughs> yes. you, you having, you Thank having, you very much for the class. Yeah. Are you having kirtan at home? Yes, yes, I'm also engaged in uh, in this kirtan service in uh, this Artha forum. Okay. You do, doing kirtan regularly, yeah? Yes, yes, yes. I'm doing kirtan regularly. And Devi Nathan Prabhuji has also engaged me in Hatha Forum where all the business people and the non devotees people will engage in Zoom. Oh. Have you got harmonium so at I, home? Did you bring a harmonium? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Good. Oh, good. Mm. Be nice to hear you sing. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much, Hari. Please take care of yourself. Thank you, Hari Krishna. Praja so, Hari. Dhanavi Prabhu is also on the line. That is every day he is cooking for the Wow. You know, uh, in, in lockdown mode, in the you know quarantine. Who is that? Oh. Who? Dhanavi Prabhu. Dhanavi Prabhu. Who? What's Danavir. Danavir. Danavir Prabhu, would you like to... Uh, oh, Danavir. Yourself? Okay. Danavir, is he there? 
Yes, yes, he's here. But I think he's also cooking and packing the prashad for the Bengali devotees who are locked down in the dormitories. Oh, okay. We're doing a lot of prasadam distribution in Thailand. In Pattaya, every day they were going 500 boxes. And then in Phuket they started, they're doing six, seven hundred boxes a day there in Phuket. So, so many hungry people there, so many, you know, people from other places, different places all come there. Russians, so many in Pattaya, there's <laughs> thousands of Russians there. Rupa Raghunath and uh, Gorangi Mataji are also on the line. Yeah, where are they? I can speak to them. Yeah, I can hear you. I can't see you yet, but I hear you. Please get closer, Prabhupada. Please get closer. And the, the backdrop is a bit very bright, so maybe yeah, you may want to move here. The sun is coming in, that's why. Yeah. How are you, Guru Maharaj? I'm fine, thank I'm, you. Yeah? I'll humble this to you. Thank you so much for the wonderful classes that you've been giving in Mayapur. Uh, simply amazing, Maharaj. Uh, yeah. Really, really nice. Yeah, I'm Thank having you, a, I'm having a good time here in Mayapur. They give me a lot of Thank classes. You. My goodness. <laughs> you can see Maharaj so fired up with the classes. Very nice. Thank you so much. And thank you for enabling the Facebook because sometimes you miss it. We get to see uh, and and listen later on. Really, really, really helpful, Maharaj. Thank you so much. I wanted to convey that to you. Oh, thank you for in encouraging me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, do have a question on the Sankhya philosophy, but I'll write to you, Maharaj, and then we can uh, maybe explain to me a bit more. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll wait for your mail. Yeah. Rajahari Prabhu is here, and uh, uh, Govinda Prabhu, he could not join us today because he has a court case. Yeah. Srivas Prabhu could not join us because he had to go to, to work in the courts. Okay, yeah, yeah. Hare, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Braja Hare Prabhu. Nice to hear your voice. Thank you for the classes Maharaj. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you for for hearing. Yeah. So you're still working at home Prabhu? Braja Hare? Yes, I'm still working from home. Um, we, we do class, uh, I teach lectures using uh, online. Everything is done online. Wow, nice. What about Lakshmi? She's also working from home. And Krishna uh, doesn't go to uh, his daycare now. He'll start in June. Okay. So everyone is at home. Oh, the whole family at home, eh? Yes. How, how many How many maids do you got there? You got a couple of maids? No, one, one. Just one? one. Oh, okay. So, must be quite fun there. The, the second maid was still only for a few months, and then uh, we we back to she she left. Okay. We got a lot of we got a lot of people here in Mayapur still. You know, there's a, a number of people here from Malaysia. They're stuck here. They're 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 staying nearby. But because it's locked down, they don't let everybody go in the temple. Only a few people get to go in the temple. And most of the people are all staying outside. I don't even know who's here hardly because they're not allowed to come to the temple. But Agni Dev is here. I saw him once or twice. He's here and a lot of Malaysian, a lot of Russian. <laughs> All stuck. We've got about 30 Chinese still here. <laughs> they can't get back. They talked to the Chinese embassy. They said, oh, we want to go back to China. Chinese embassy lady said, yeah, I want to go back too, but there's no flight. What can we do? <laughs> Everything locked down. Guru Maharaj, yeah. we also have uh, a few devotees from Malaysia. Uh, Kasturi. Mataji, Kasturi Bhai, yeah. and then uh, and uh, Pushpa Gopalini Devi Dasi. Pushpa Gopalini, yeah, yeah, Pushpa. And a few others had, had also joined, but you know they also left the call. Yeah. And a few of our Singapore participants uh, from Lakshmi Temple, they are still on the line. Deepa Mataji is here still. Lalita Mataji is here. Uh, 
Aarti Mataji is here. Gopi Prabhu is here. You know, so I, I think uh, yeah, oh, okay. they, uh, they must be enjoying your or appreciating your <laughs> your uh, association, and that's why they are not logging off. <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna. Okay, very nice to meet everyone. Would you like to say something on behalf of your family? Ashok Prabhu was also here just now, Guru Maharaj. Oh, I think he must have gone for... he's gone to work. How is Ashok and Pavita? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Oh, Hare Hare Pranam. Is that Prema Padmini? No, Prem Radhika. Prema Radhika, Hare okay. Krishna. Ah, Prema Radhika, <laughs> Hare Krishna. Yeah. Um, but so thank you so much for your class and I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> How are you Maharaj? Yeah, I'm surviving here, Mayapur. Mm. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, Prabhu has to go to work so he couldn't join in. Yeah. I really enjoyed the class. Did the son, he, your son also to gone to work? work? Son also going? Huh? Your son? No, we actually we are working uh, from home. At, uh, so my, my my son is working from home all the time. Oh, okay. Now, uh -huh. but, uh, Prabhu is like certain days he has to go to the court, you know. Oh. So, yeah. Oh, they still have yeah, court. Like the court still going on, huh? Yes, yes. And there's so many cases, Maharaj. So, you know, he has to be there. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, another two more uh, Lakshmi Narayan students still on the call. One is Sonia Mataji. Uh, Sonia Mataji, you know, she has been coming every day for our classes. She's really new, um, but, you know, she, she attends every day. So for the past 32 days, she has been coming for all the classes. Uh, Shiva Prabhu is also, you know, very new uh, to Krishna consciousness, but every day they have been coming for the classes. Oh, wonderful. Uh, with the, they are also coming for the virtual Bhagavad Gita classes, which we are having on the Friday evening. Uh, Sonia Mataji, would you like to unmute yourself and maybe share with Guru Maharaj what your experience has been getting into Krishna consciousness? Uh, Hare Krishna to everyone. Sorry, I am not very confident at speaking, but uh, since I joined these virtual classes, I've been feeling better in life in many ways. I feel more happier and at peace with myself. And also, I, I found like a sense of belonging and which was absent for a long time. And uh, I do not have anyone around my age group who actually share a lot of things like these. And coming to these classes really made me feel at peace with myself and a lot of things which I never understood before. So I'm really, it's a very peaceful morning to start with and I get a very good start ahead because of the classes. I'm very, very thankful to Prabhuji for these classes and I look forward to it every every day. Now, sadly, no longer on Saturday and sun, no longer on Saturdays, but I really, really look forward to these classes. Okay, very nice. Wonderful. And we also have Lalita Mataji on the call. So she's a head of department in uh, one of the schools in Singapore. And uh, she has been with us to Mayapur. She has been with us to Vrindavan. She has been uh, to Puri with us, etc. So Lalita Mataji, would you like to unmute yourself? Um, hello. Um, Hare Krishna Prabhu uh, Maharaji. Uh, it's been a pleasure listening to you. I enjoyed the talk and the lessons. Um, I really appreciate the book as well. Um, and I've been with this group, I think, for the last uh, two, three years. And um, it's been really an eye-opener, like Sonia said. Um, I used to just pray the normal, uh, but didn't really know much. And now I'm actually reading the Bhagavatam as well, uh, thanks to Padma Lujan, uh, Prabhuji. Um, this association with this group has helped me quite a bit to move on in this Krishna consciousness and I really appreciate all the services that all the Prabhujis are doing for us and thank you to you too. Oh, very nice. Thank you, Lolita Mataji. Very nice to hear from you. So I also have a, another uh, former colleague who used to work in uh, the same building as me, uh, Mr. Gopi. Gopi Prabhu? Gopi is really new, so he just started like, you know, maybe the last 15 classes he has been attending every morning. He's a Malaysian working in Singapore. 
His wife is from China. From where? Ruby from. Yes, from. hello everybody. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Gopi Prabhu, how, how, how is your introduction into Krishna consciousness? Uh, it's very good. Uh, something new for me. And uh, I feel uh, uh, getting a bit comfortable into the group. Uh. Okay, very nice, very nice. So, Gopi Prabhu is uh, from Malaysia, but he works in Singapore. His wife is from China. And um, yeah. I'm very inspired by, you know, his, his take of uh, Krishna consciousness. Okay, wonderful. And, uh, we have Arti Mataji also. Arti Mataji is a very, um, you know, renowned uh, personality in Singapore. So she conducts a lot of panel discussions. Uh, she does a lot of, um, you know, society work, etc. And Arti Mataji is actually um, doing a, a panel discussion with a you know, a few hundred people next week and she has very kindly invited me to be one of the panelists. So the, the theme is around soul conversations. <laughs> you know, what is the spiritual soul conversation? So, you know, the spiritual side of, you know, how do we look at things? Um, what, what is happening right now in this world? How do you give a spiritual perspective to it? Um, you know, so there are many, you know, probably hundreds of people who are going to be joining that call. So I've got another Buddhist on the call so it's going to be yeah really nice to see you know what the perspectives are from Bhagavad Gita on what's happening in, in the world right now what's the perspective from Bhagavatam etc so I'm very honored to have uh, Arti Mataji on our call she's, she's been coming you know since the past year um, you know she's one of the participants who asks some really intelligent questions every time um, yeah uh, Arti Mataji uh, Namaskar, good morning, uh, Maharaj, and thank you, sir, for this very, very, very blessed opportunity. My humble uh, thank you to all of you. Very blessed with your answer, even on the Mother's Day. Uh, very grateful to uh, Pradeep, sir, for being able to say, I somehow got through uh, this. I think it's all God's grace. And I'm very much attending and enjoying these lessons since yesterday, uh, Zoom lessons. Um, uh, very, very little I'm able to contribute compared to all of you all who are doing uh, a lot in, in spreading the awareness and consciousness. Uh, very, very small service. Um, so uh, like, like Sir said, I am very curious and probably God has made me this way so I can learn more to understand and uh, if possible uh, you know spread to my family and through them to the people they interact with uh, if if i could if i could say anything i would just say uh, keep teaching us keep giving us your valuable uh, and very very precious learnings and uh, thank you so much Dhanavir prabhu can you unmute yourself you are the only one left packing prasadam you know so must be busy yeah okay not a problem okay so Hare Krishna. 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 Janavir Prabhu. Yes. Thank you for the nice lecture Manas. Okay, I'll wait for the mail. Yeah, no problem. You keep busy there, you keep serving. Very nice. You learn all the cooking. Get experience, very nice. Good service for Krishna. Okay, Guru Dev, thank you very much. Thank you very much, all assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We miss you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I don't know how to get.
How did it get out of this? <laughs> Leave red button. Red button. Click on the red button. Yeah, I clicked. Okay, now. Got it. Okay. <laughs>